One of the things you asked for was a review on uh, vector equations. So your typical vector equation is going to look something like this, where a and b are both vectors. And a is a position vector. And it represents any point um, that's on your equation of your line. And then your b vector is kind of like your slope. Uh, it's your what we would call your direction vector. And it represents what direction and how far it's going in the x, y, and z direction. Uh, so you can kind of think about this as your point slope or your uh, slope intercept form. The only thing is that instead of having to have the intercept, you can have any point on the line at all. And so that's your typical form. And the best way to kind of remember how to do this is to look at some problems. So this first problem here, we have two points that are both on L1. We have A and B, and it asks us to first find vector AB. And they're guiding you here. This is the natural first step that you're going to need to do before you can come up with the vector equation of the line. Remember to find the vector from A to B. You're going to subtract B minus A. So 2 minus 1 is 1. Negative 2 minus negative 1 is negative 1. And 5 minus 4 is positive 1. So AB is 1, negative 1, 1. That vector represents the direction from point A to B. That's how you get from A from one point to the other. So when it asks you to find an equation for L1, that, that right there is your direction vector. Now, for your position vector, okay, so that's our B. Well, I just wrote B because I was saying B. <laughs> Uh, okay, so for your position vector, you could use posi a position vector for point A or for point B. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Okay. I'm just going to use A because that was the first one there. So that's how we came up with the vector equation of the line. That's one of the most common, what we just did already, is one of the most common uh, types of vector problem, vector line problems. They give you two points. They ask you to come up with the equation, the vector equation of the line. Well, you're expected to know that AB would give you the direction vector, and then A or B can give you your position vector. Then it asks us to, it says, it gives us the equation for L2, and it asks us to find the angle between L1 and L2. So when we're going to do that, we are looking at the angle between the direction of both lines. We don't care what point is on those lines. We care about what direction they are. That's what's going to tell us the angle. So in order to come up with the angle, we are going to use this direction vector from this line and this direction vector from this line. And there is actually a formula on your formula sheet that says cosine of theta equals the dot product of your two vectors divided by the magnitudes of your two vectors multiplied. So we can solve this out. Cosine of theta equals, remember that to take the dot product, you multiply the x's, the y's, and the z's, and you add them all up. So 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. So that's our dot product. Divided by the magnitude, which is uh, the square of the x squared plus y squared plus z squared, the square root of that. So that's going to give us 1 plus 1 plus 1. That gives us 3. And uh, the other one, 2 squared is 4, plus 1 squared is 5, plus 3 squared is 9, so that's 14. <coughs> and so what we are going to do from here is just solve this out. And we can use our graphing calculators, which is really nice. And divide by the square root of 3 times the square root of 14. And we need to make sure that our mode is in degree mode right now. Um, 
Although I guess it didn't specify, so I would assume they would actually accept either one. Okay, so uh, we get theta to be 51.9 degrees. So whenever we're finding the angle between two lines, we want to make sure we're using the direction vector, not the position vector. Okay, then it says that the lines intersect at a point C. Find the coordinates. Okay, in order to do this, we are going to actually just come up with our parametric equations. Uh, so set the top line, the middle line, and the bottom line each equal to each other, the x's, the y's, and the z's. So 1 plus 1t equals 2 plus 2s. Negative uh, 1 minus 1t equals 4 plus s. And 4 plus t equals 7 plus 3s. Now, you can use substitution or elimination. In this case, I think these two would eliminate very nicely, so we, I'm just going to go ahead and sum those right now. So 1 minus 1 is 0, and t minus t is 0. So we get 0 equals 6 plus 3s. So negative 6 equals 3s, and x s equals negative 2. Now, since it actually tells us that they intersect, we don't have to worry about it being skew. If we did have to worry, if it said find any possible intersections, we would want to find s and t and plug it in in L1 and in L2 and make sure that we got the same point for both. That's how we would make sure that they really did intersect. But since it's telling us they intersect, we don't have to worry about that. And we can just take negative 2 and plug it in for s into our equation and get our ordered pair. So 2, um, let's see, 2, 4, 7, and then there's a negative 2, and then 2, 1, 3. And that's going to give us our coordinates. So 2 minus 4 is negative 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. And 7 minus 6 is 1. And so the coordinates of the intersection is negative 2, comma 2, comma 1. And make sure we're writing it as coordinates because it would be silly to lose points for writing it as a position vector when it asked for coordinates. Okay. Let's look at one more problem. It says a particle is moving with a constant velocity along line L. Its initial position is A, and it gives us the point. After one second, the particle has moved to B, and it gives us the point. Find the velocity vector AB. <clears throat> and so again, that would be B minus A. So 9 minus 6 is 3. And negative 6 minus negative 2, so negative 6 plus 2, is negative 4. And 15 minus 10 is 5. And so there's our velocity vector. Okay, Remember, velocity vectors tell you not only the speed, but the direction. When it asks for the speed of the particle, it just wants to know what's the total distance it's going over, you know, per second or per minute or whatever. So when we talk about velocity, it's a vector that has direction for x, y, and z. When we talk about speed, we're just talking about the magnitude of that vector. So that's something you guys might want to just kind of make a note of and maybe make a flashcard to help you remember. 3 squared plus negative 4 squared plus 5 squared. And so that's the square root of 9 plus 16 plus 25. And so that gives us the square root of 50. And we could leave it like that, or we could actually evaluate it and round to three sig figs. If we did that, it'd be 7.07. .07. And then speed would be distance per second. Now, it doesn't actually tell us if it's meters or miles, so we'll just say units per second. And that's our speed. Lastly, it asks for an equation of the line. This is just like the last one. Okay. Um, that didn't work. It's going to be 
R equals uh, A plus TB. We need a position vector. We can choose A or B, so I'm just going to choose A because it's the first one there. doesn't matter which one. And then plus T times B. B is the direction vector AB, which we found in the first part of this problem. And there's our equation for line L. Hopefully that helped you remember about vector equations. Let me know if you'd like some more practice problems.